So hi, today I am here with Andrew Tomasetti from TerraNet. Andrew, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, you know, if I'm honest, this isn't the first conversation I've had with you. I actually got to have kind of a one-on-one -on -one masterclass with you a little bit earlier this summer um, on how you use a data-first approach to all of your digital adoption projects. And you really showed me um, how you've used your experience and come up into digital adoption and sales and customer success to really drive the success of your program. So today on Origin Stories, I just want to learn more about you. I'd love to um, learn a little bit more about your current role and how you got there to Terranet. Yeah, for sure. And uh, first of all, thanks, uh, thanks Stephanie. It's always been a pleasure uh, speaking with you and glad I can help uh, share some insight in how we're uh, leveraging digital adoption. Um, I actually came on to Terranet because they were looking to build out their new customer success initiatives and fell into digital adoption because I was looking into um, how to capture data to understand consumer behavior, right? What are people leveraging within the softwares that we offer? Again, on the other side, what are they not leveraging that maybe we can bring more visibility to, or maybe just get to the point where we understand that it's not that valuable. Um, so it's good to know what customers are using and likewise what they're not. And we started to look for platforms that can really give us that insight. Um, and as we go on, I'm sure you'll, uh, you'll want to know what we have found most valuable in, in looking at WalkMe and uh, all the other solutions that we found. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really, you know, finding out how your platform is being used and then how you can make it better. That's awesome. I think that every company is so different in when they, you know, feel the need for something, whether it's to view more data or to train individuals. And I think it's very interesting that um, your company, it was very specifically data, like very data driven and really just finding that information. Um, so how did they bring you onto the team and how did you start to um, build with WalkMe? So I was actually, um, I've spent probably about the better part of a decade or slightly over um, in real estate and prop tech, um, both in working for other companies as well as building my own solutions and bringing them to market. And when the opportunity came by um, that I found online through Terranet in them wanting to kind of start this new initiative in understanding their customers and, you know, building that, building that uh, user base out, it was very interesting to me because I'd been very familiar with their products and wanted to see what the opportunity was about. And it kind of grew from there. It started off with, you know, just having accounts and trying to, you know, work um, that into the customer success ecosystem but then it quickly adapted to, okay, well, how do we scale this um, adoption? How do we scale this customer success initiative? And not just, you know, reach out to customers or devise a plan, but how do we understand it on a scale that, you know, when you have five figures or a hundred figure monthly active user, it's very difficult to have a team sizable enough to uh, take them on and understand their needs. Um, and you, leveraging something like WalkMe uh, was able to kind of hone that in and make sure that we're, not leaving any opportunity on the table. That is so interesting. One thing I'm actually really interested in, and I know that this is probably your pre-digital adoption experience, but you mentioned that, you know, you create solutions and you take them to market. And yeah. um, again, I know this is a total tangent, but I'm actually really interested in learning more about that because I feel like, you know, a lot, there's a lot of people out there who are practitioners who are able to, you know, take, take in an order and do the job, but, when you start to become a creator and you really start to come up with your own solutions, you move into a very strategic mindset and a very strategic um, path. Um, do you want to tell me or anyway, tell everybody a little bit more about um, these solutions that you create? For sure. Yeah. So I've created a few for the uh, new construction space. Uh, one was actually kind of a new construction um, MLS style platform where, you know, builders could manage their inventory real estate agents from across Canada and the U.S. could sign up and actually see that inventory and then facilitate that sale um, in an online uh, marketplace. And, and one of the main challenges I was trying to solve at that point was, oddly enough, visibility, which is the same challenge I'm trying to solve with WalkMe. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so that, that, was a very big, um, that was a very big push for me. And it kind of honed a lot of my skills in being a strategic first thinker. You know, I, I pride myself on the ability to be able to plan and execute and do everything in between. And that's really what I find being um, a successful digital adoption manager is all about. You need to be able to figure out what goals you want to achieve. 
You need to be able to create a plan to get you to that end goal, but then you also need to be able to execute in between in building, QAing, being able to understand if something is worth doing, you know, calculating that human cost. And it really does test a lot of your abilities. Um, I constantly find myself trying to, you know, improve my efficiency and, you know, really enhance my abilities in leveraging WalkMe. And I find out something new every week. So it's, it's really been a test on uh, kind of all my senses. I think that's really interesting. And it's, uh, you know, we see so many people coming into digital adoption through learning and development, and they were creating learning programs before this. But hearing that you came into this role specifically because you have this very strategic mindset, you have this very data first approach. I think that that is something that other companies should really look at. You should really look at, you know, who should be running this digital adoption program? What kind of mindset do they have? Do they have the mindset of just create content and you're done and ship it off to see? Or do they have this mindset of what's next? How does this align with the organization? Um, so I, from that perspective, like, I don't know, like, do you teach any classes? Like, do you have any webinars? That's, <laughs> that's really interesting. I remember mentioning this um, in our first call a couple months ago. But I was just amazed in the fact that you said, well, first I just looked at data and I just studied the site and then I built from there. And I'd never heard of somebody doing that before. It's always, okay, what does our learners need? Let's just <laughs> take an order and do it. But I'd love to, I feel like, and I don't want to answer the question for you, but I love knowing digital adoption professionals, radioactive spider moments. But I felt like that was a radioactive spider moment for me thinking like, oh, I could use data first. So tell us about, you know, this data first approach and how you, instead of just, you know, looking at a process and building it, you first looked at the platform and looked at the data. Yeah, no, for sure. And uh, I, I think it was when I, kind of my shining moment when I knew kind of walk me was going to be um, the platform for us that was going to help us for our needs was in seeing insights. Um, and not just the way that it, because it's one thing to capture data. It's another thing to give you insights and give you something easily digestible. Because if you just have data spit out at you in a long form, you're, you know, making sense of it becomes a very big challenge. But WalkMe's managed to kind of put that data in a way that you can actually make sense of it very quickly, but also create action from it. And that to me was kind of like the shining moment was like, okay, you've got this area where I can see kind of everything that's happening with the platform. I can customize the way I want to see goals through something like funnels. Um, but then also anything that I build is segregated and segmented in a way where it's super easy to get the information that you want without all the fluff. Um, and that to me was super impactful, but then being able to use that and actually have that create action through anything that you build within the application, that's where the real power comes in. Because originally I was looking at it as two different platforms, right? I mm -hmm. wanted a platform that would give me all that information and then I wanted something else that can potentially take that and create those actions. With WalkMe, I got both. And that was kind of the, okay, let's, uh, <laughs> let's see what we can do with it. That's incredible. And I think it's so important for customers. Um, you know, I work with internal users a lot and we have our sales, we have our HR and we're able to segment. But I think that really seeing the data that's coming from your customer uh, and seeing if the data really aligns with their business value that you promised them. Um, have you found that you're able to help them better align or help them support at the time of need? Or what, what is this data really helping you do for your customers within the platform? Oh, 100%. It's, well, it's helping on multiple fronts, I'm finding. Um, we've been able to leverage it to see you know, where there's opportunities to add more value. Um, things that we find valuable as you know, product teams are sometimes very different than what your customers do. So with WalkMe, we're able to see, okay, this is an area where most of the customers are spending their time and with a high frequency. So maybe we can double down on these areas and we have. And then there's other areas where you might be investing a lot of time and resources, but nobody's experiencing it. And those are huge areas for opportunity because you have nowhere to go but up. Now, if you can't move that needle up, that's when you start to think to yourself, okay, well, maybe this is something that we need to sunset or alter or find out more discovery from the customers on why we think this is valuable, but they're not seeing that same value. Um, so that's, that's a huge thing for us because especially with product teams, you know, you constantly want feedback 
And sometimes that feedback doesn't come in the form of text from a customer. Sometimes it comes in from the form of something like insights where you can see that real-time data because that's feedback just as good as any. It's just something that you wouldn't necessarily see unless you have that platform in place. Exactly. And I, there's so many, you know, customer surveys, there's so many platforms that are trying to get this customer feedback, but this is such unbiased, you know, this isn't somebody had enough time to fill out a survey. This is exactly what they're doing on your site. I think that's so incredible. I, I was, I'm so grateful. Insights just keeps getting better and better as I see it. I'm not good with numbers. I I feel like I'm number (laughs) dyslexic. People say that's not a thing. Um, but I just look at numbers and I'm like, oh, my brain just starts to think about like lollipops in the afternoon. I just, I can't with numbers sometimes. And I feel like I'm, (laughs) I, I'm not the exception. I'm not the exception. I know everybody has issues with data, but I think it's so great that it's, it's just more digestible. It's more digestible. I feel like for stakeholders to come in and find exactly what they need instead of having to filter and it just keeps getting better and better. Um, One thing I always ask, and I feel like you've answered this four times by telling me um, all the great things you're doing, but what do you think that your digital adoption superpower is? Something very Um, unique to you. I think, to be honest, it's very very much in line with my ability to see opportunity. Um, When... You know, when I was, you know, working for myself and, you know, trying to bring my own platforms to market and I had to be the product team and the marketing team and the sales team, I was constantly challenged with, you know, where can I be more efficient? Where can I find opportunity? And that's really the key with, with walk me because there's so many things that you can do. The only thing that restricts it is your imagination. And my imagination runs wild all the time. (laughs) Um, To be honest, actually, one of the cool things uh, I'm working on, I was working on recently was a way to leverage ActionBot. So I've been looking at it for a while and wanting to do more with it, but we don't have really all that many forms within the platform. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of users that use Salesforce um, or Workday, you know, there's constantly a ton of forms to be filled out and ActionBot works perfect at that. So we came into a situation where one of our customers has a large user base and they have internal trainers. So I was trying to figure out a way, okay, well, how can I train their trainers? So we started to leverage things like um, auto walkthroughs with mini menus that would come up, but that wasn't enough because I was like, well, they have to be launched from somewhere and I don't want to create a launcher on, you know, 15 different pages with different mini menus. So I said, why don't we leverage the action bot to kind of kickstart that training where when you come into the application, you're a trainer and I've segmented them only for a specific group. They would have that action bot called training bot (laughs) in our, in our terms. And then when they activate it, it would ask them a series of questions to figure out what they were going to train that day. Are you looking for this or this? They go down one route and then it would give them a list of possibilities. And then that would kick off that walkthrough that would stay open through that entire training session. So it's kind of a streamlined training approach that, you know, whether you have somebody that's been with your company for five minutes or five years, somebody should be able to pick that up and uh, start training right away. That's incredible. I've been dying to get to sink my teeth into the action bot. I just, I feel like I'm always a one woman (laughs) show. I mean, you're, you're a one, you're a one man show as well, I'm sure. And you're still finding the time. So that's, that's inspiring me to, to pick that up. We're working on a big workday launch and the action bot, I feel like the action bot was just made for work day. So I need to go back to school and study that action bot. (laughs) Um, One thing I'd love to know is you just told us about this incredible, you know, business case for the action bot. Do you have any other favorite solutions that you'd like to share or some, something that you're really excited about um, in addition to the action bot? Um, I would say the automated workflows. Um, I'm, I'm a big fan of automation wherever I can, you know, help myself or help anybody else out. Um, that's always warranted and, and always welcome. So I've been leveraging the auto walkthroughs to kind of get people through that experience where, you know, you answer a couple questions and your entire profile is set up, you know, your, all your information that would maybe take somebody probably, you know, 20 minutes to click on each separate heading on three different pages. Now with four or five different questions can be done in, you know, 20 seconds. Um, so that's really interesting to me. And I'm finding more and more ways to incorporate that auto, um, the auto walkthroughs into our uh, builds. The only thing is we don't have too many areas for that. 
I mean, you using Workday, there's, you know, you can put in a million automations in there to really streamline things. With our external application, it's not, um, it's not fully there, but um, no, automation is a big thing and I've been exploring it more and more. That's fantastic. And I agree. I think that specifically for, you know, customer facing or homegrown products, you know, nobody wants to go to those UX designers yeah. and say, oh, I need to take away five steps. You know, no one wants to call their child ugly. Um, <laughs> so especially when it's your own internal product. But I think that finding just even little ways to, to, to automate things presents such a great customer experience. I love what you, when you called out to even something as simple as creating a profile. That is just one thing that the customer does, but making that a easier and like faster experience. Like I create so many profiles throughout the day. Oh, yeah. I'm so sick of it. Like I, like my name is spelled weird. The first name and last name is terrible. It auto corrects everything. So having that easier on a new platform would give me a great first impression. Yeah. hundred um, percent. Especially I, when things are on different pages and you have to click on so many tabs, like I'm the same way as you, like, you know, we, as people who work for digital companies, we're constantly, you know, bringing on new systems and it's, it's difficult to spend the time in doing something, but, and yet it's so simple, but if you just make that, you know, you reduce that friction in front of the user, you can get what you want done. You just have to make it in a way that, you know, they can experience without disrupting their day. Fantastic. Um, I've actually been talking to a few digital adoption professionals that just signed they're starting, you know, they're getting into the Digital Adoption Institute and they're opening the editor for the first time. What yeah. advice, um, and you having come into this fairly recently, what advice would you give to a brand new digital adoption professional who's opening that editor for the first time and logging in? I would say uh, get organized. Um, one of the biggest challenges when I first started was in understanding how am I gonna manage this? Where am I gonna keep all this information? How am I going to see it, view it, edit it? And I originally started off with, you know, this big spreadsheet that as I started to add more columns and customize, it got bigger and bigger and bigger. And eventually I was like, I can't even see this information anymore. Like I can see it, but I'm not taking it in because it was so big. Um, so what I started doing was looking for a platform that revolved around project management where I could really hone that in and automate my, uh, my workflow. And I came across a few platforms. Uh, I've used Asana a lot in the past, um, but monday.com is actually what I have been using. And honestly, with the automations and the ability to customize um, as much as you want, pretty much to your own imagination, it's, it's significantly improved everything I've done in WalkMe. And I probably wouldn't go back. And it's so good that I actually pay for it personally. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wow. That's a yeah, no, it's, testimonial for sure. It's, it's been fantastic. And anybody getting into it, that's probably the biggest advice um, I, can, I can give is get organized from the beginning because it will significantly help you. Because um, once you start building and, you know, you become, you have that editor that gets built out a lot more, it becomes more and more difficult to backtrack. But if you do it from the beginning, it's a much easier experience. I, that's a very good call out. Um, and again, as somebody who came from a role as an individual contributor who just you know, took projects as they came and didn't have that big picture, I think that coming in as a digital adoption professional where you're basically managing a portfolio of projects, I think that that's a really great call out. You, know, you can scale organization, um, you can scale what's organized and you can scale excellence, you cannot scale sticky notes all over your desk. Um, and I say that from experience. <laughs> I'm still guilty of the sticky notes. I have them everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, it works for me, I guess, but I'm glad that somebody else does too. Um, a final question today, Andrew, um, what advice would you give to an organization um, who are considering using a digital adoption platform? I would say that, you know, and, and before, you know, ourselves and our company got involved in it, digital adoption um, was in my head, you know, a few different things. And it was kind of on the border of nice to have and need to have after having actually experienced it and implemented it and seen the value of it. I would say that digital adoption is more of a must have um, much like a CRM, right? You don't run a sales organization. You don't run a sales business without having a place to, you know, bucket your customers and your prospects and your pipeline. Um, digital adoption is the same thing for product and CS teams. You know, it gives you that line of sight into how your product is doing and gives you the ability to influence behavior. 
And that to me is, is invaluable. So I would say the biggest advice for any company considering it is if you consider anything else in the company, <laughs> like sales and revenue and you know product efficiency and being able to build a better product for your customers, digital adoption is a must have. That's fantastic. Well, Andrew, thank you so much for joining today. And I just feel like I always learn so much when we speak. I, I took notes as we were going. I was like, oh no, I need to remember that. And I really appreciate it. I think I've spoken with digital adoption professionals all over the world, but I feel like you're the one who's like data, 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 and you just, you do it. Like eating your vegetables. You're just like, yeah, I just, I do data. That's my thing. Um, so I, <laughs> I really love data, not so much vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> No, well, you're from Canada. I feel like people from Canada are a little healthier than America. Um, okay. Anyway, <laughs> subjectively. But thank you so much for joining. And again, thank you all so much for listening. Have a great day, Andrew. Awesome. Thank you, Stephanie. You have a great day as well.